Hi, this is Josh Kulp. We are learning Daf Shui, Daf Samech Bet of Baba Kama. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the halacha here that sort of appears towards the end of um, the parak, uh, before the last, the next, the last Mishnah. Uh, and Rav Ada Breda Rav Avia asks Rav Ashi, Ma bein gazlan lechansan? What's the difference between a gazlan, right, uh, a t- one term used for robbery, and a chamsan, another term used for robbery or stealing. Uh, and uh, this is a classic midrashic kind of question. Why does the Torah use the same word, the two different words for what seem to be the same activity? Uh, Amarle, so Rav Ashi explains to him, chamsan yahiv dami, gazlan lo yahiv dami. A chamsan gives money for the article, which is a forced sale, whereas the gazlan just takes the article without giving any money. Uh, and both of them are wrong, both of them are prohibited by the Torah, uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, Amarle, so Ravada's is puzzled by it. Iyahiv dami chamsan karitle, if he gives money, how can you call him a chamsan? Veha amar Ravhuna taluha vizavin zvine zvine. Ravhuna said if they uh, hung, sung, strung someone up, hung him, some kind of, put him under some kind of serious duress, and he sold his articles, his objects, his belongings, his sale is valid. Now, I'll come back to this in a minute, which means uh, how can you call someone a chamsan if he validly bought something? Lo So if the person says, I wanted to buy it, then it is a sale. If he doesn't say, I wanted to buy it, then it's not a sale and he's not a chamsan. Uh, now, this law by Rav Huna, that if they strung him up and he sold it, his sale is valid, is it's one of those laws that you read in the Talmud and you're like, what? A forced sale is valid? If I go put a gun to somebody's head and tell them, you have to sell me something, it's valid? Why is that not, Ill- a-, a, illegal? Put me into the category of a chamsan. And second... Why is his sale valid? Why why not say he did it under duress? Most of the time the rabbis say if you do something under duress, it doesn't count as your will. So this is one of those cases where, um, like, I don't have an easy explanation for it. I can tell you what the halacha says. Uh, I'm trying to read a little bit behind it, make some kind of rational sense out of it to turn um, the Talmud into something that makes a little bit more sense to me. And one of those is the idea that when we're talking about people's legal actions, we only refer to their external activities and we don't allow people to make up excuses concerning their intent. Uh, and that is, that is to say that the way we figure out what a person has done is by what they've done and what they've said and what they're keeping inside is not, um, is not uh, relevant to their legal actions. Now, I agree this doesn't 100% solve the problem because it seems quite obvious that he was strung up and therefore forced to sell something. Certainly, I am not advocating that like in a, an our world, this halacha would make all that much sense. But perhaps what Rav Huna is trying to say is like, especially with the Stama de Gemara's addition of he said that he wants to sell something, which makes it a little bit more sensible is look, if you go and you sell something and then you claim afterwards that you were doing so under duress, well, how is the purchaser supposed to know? How is anybody else supposed to know? What you have in your own heart, your own uh, uh, motivations are hidden to the rest of the world, and therefore the only legally actable um, things that we can, we can adjudicate by are those things that you actually do and not what you have in your mental processes. Now, there is, the rabbis do have a way around this, a workaround, and that is if you tell somebody beforehand that you're going, you don't want to sell something and you tell witnesses, look, Frank is going to force me to sell something. I apologize if your name is Frank. Frank is going to force me to sell something. I don't really want to sell it. If you tell that to witnesses beforehand, then your sale will not be valid and you can bring your witnesses afterwards to reclaim the object that Frank forced you to sell. So there is a way of avoiding this problem, but, but I do think that like, that's something that halacha sometimes does. It gives us a difficult halacha that doesn't make sense to give us some kind of principle over here. And the principle, I think, 
in a maybe less directly connected to this particular case makes sense, and that is that we judge people's actions by what they do and not by what they're thinking on the inside, at least under certain circumstances. But I'd be well um, interested to hear your own approach to this, and I would encourage people to join our live Daf Shui class, which will be beginning, uh, be beginning again at the end of August. I hope to see you there.